You play first. Oh, we play first. I feel like just start <laughs> playing. I feel like it Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And that a blessing, every blessing is for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that a Every blessing for you, just for you, because we are in the depressing. Two girls giving blessings to you, to you. Hello and welcome back to Anti Depressing. This is the show where we talk about everything. From liturgy to Lexapro. So happy to be here, you guys. How are you doing? So good. I'm so happy you guys just got to see Chanel's talents. <laughs> Full I hope send. that that records well. Who knows? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know what that actually sounds like. The whole first half of that. <laughs> I, just, I didn't know you were actually going to sing, <laughs> to be honest. That oh, was, did we want to? Or no, did no, we I, want to just, I loved to just play I music? I thought that was the most perfect thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Um, we'll see what truly, that like. I thought they were just going to be playing the piano and then you started singing and it was like, <laughs> maybe we could splice it and use that as our intro every no, single I time. No, I really think so. I thought that was perfect. Hmm. Hmm. I don't All know right, if you well, need to officially drop a comment, it, you guys, and good. let us know what you think. Should that be the new intro? <laughs> Should that be the new intro? Were you guys into that it? That was totally, that the wasn't even written sounds. down. That was just like my spirit. No, they were just like dueling pianos and she just, <laughs> that just came from within. Yeah. So... Hope you guys are doing well. <sighs> you guys, we have not been in the same place in a long time. Yeah, we and haven't recorded in the same place. We forgot how to hook up everything. And just know that we're doing this for you because mm -hmm. it is also currently 9 p.m., you guys, and we're recording yeah. this. It's when we normally go to bed. You. This is normally our kick We're looking time. tired. But we're Because here. we are. But it's all love. It loves It's about it. authenticity. It's here. love that drives us forward. So <laughs> how are you doing? So beautiful. I'm doing really good. I'm excited yeah. to be in the same place as you. Me too. Me too. Life is going well. <sighs> Life is going well for me too. Just rocking and rolling, you guys. Just working, trying to stay mm. alive. The norm. You've been yeah. working. You've been gigging. Dude, I've been gigging. Speaking at stuff. She's I've been, been gigging. I've been working. She's staying been up a speaker. Till the PMs doing mm. emails, mm -mm, doing mm -mm, emails, mm -mm. answering emails, which is like not no, my you're favorite. You're like hundred. You can say here we emails. are. Yeah, I just yeah. So Chanel's pretty tired, but she's yeah. ready for the weekend and ready to sleep, hang out with you, maybe oh. get some new New Balance shoes and just kind of hit the outlet mall this weekend. Just kind of look hang, out, you know. Maybe just do something. Mm -hmm. No, just so chill. So hope you guys yeah. are doing well. We missed y'all. Last week was kind of a tough week for both of us. Uh, Jasmine's fam yeah. just kind of fell ill, fell to that. And now a little bit of that kind of again this week or whatever that is. Yeah, I don't even know. Because yeah, there was Everybody some throwing just up, keeps right? Being sick. Last week, yeah, one time one, there was very one throw strange. Up. Yeah, that little stomach bug's very going phantom. around. Phantom, but babies mm -hmm. got sick random so it's drop yeah so thank so. god you guys we're on kind of the other side mm -hmm. of it the oldest one is pushing through and uh the rest we're of us gonna are make just it. trying to make it so but you know I don't feel worry like i am so much shorter than you this week isn't this hilarious <laughs> yeah like this is I'll actually just really funny you. i'm like do i need to make this i to you our producers i know gonna be i was like, like we look like two different <laughs> like we're not remember when we like <laughs> what a world you you guys we're just excited to be here. Yeah, so, we're really happy to be here with you guys. So I feel like in the same place. we should kick it off um, with it's just anti depressing like anti-depressing Catholic news. That's what I think. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All right. This is a very good one. Very wholesome. Right? Very cute. So mm -hmm. tell us about it. Catholic-run mobile medical and dental clinic mm -hmm. fills needs in rural Missouri. So mm -hmm. the Archdiocese of St. Louis um, is the largest diocese in Missouri uh, by population. And the majority of the Archdiocese is pretty rural. So mm -hmm. they have now 
um, a rural parish clinic, mm. um, which is an initiative of the archdiocese. Um, and they, it's a mobile medical clinic that has an accompanying medical dental clinic that, or mobile dental clinic that follows along and provides services for just people along their yeah. several routes. Oh. Um, which I just oh like love God. this because this is an example of how the church can serve her people. Yes. In ways that the people need. Yeah. Which and one like of those talk ways. about meeting the people where they're at. That's it. And like going to them. Yeah. And, and serving. One of those big it's ways really is beautiful. medical attention. Because it's A, what you know? expensive. People need it. <laughs> and B, like people just can't get there mm-hmm. as easy as they used to. So people I need absolutely it to actually live. Yeah, I absolutely love this. Especially for our elderly folks that just like mm-hmm. can't be up and out. Like sitting in doctor's offices forever. So just really yeah. happy that this is happening. According to the Archdiocese, is an article by Catholic News Agency. The clinic has collaborated with several local Catholic health systems mm-hmm. to provide medical services and other assistance. Um, Dr. Tom Johns, a retired anesthesiologist and a physician volunteer, um, told EWCN News and Death that the Catholic faith is very important to the volunteers' work. The team starts each day with mass and prayer before going out to serve patients. Mm. Oh my gosh, so cool! And so, yeah, the yeah. it's just it's just really great. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Like reading through this, it's so cool to think about. Like, you know, it's for like the like people with no insurance or underinsured, um, and they have like qualifiers for like what amount of money you need to make. That's but it's date. like not actually that crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's really cool that people who wouldn't otherwise be getting medical attention or might be like, oh, I'm only going to do it if I'm in crisis Mm. or, you know, if I really need it. But people who are like being able to be proactive with their health in that like this Catholic community is being proactive for the health of their communities and like showing the care. I love that. Take care of us. Medical, Medical care. We all need better medical care. Offer better health insurance. Please. Please. <laughs> please, a plea. My deductible <laughs> cannot be twelve thousand dollars anymore. Please <laughs> save me. Please save me. Help us. Help us. That's our desperate help plea. Help us. Help so. you. So help us help you in our antidepressant Catholic news today. Thank you to the Archdiocese of St. Louis for recognizing Cheers. human dignity in a real way. Cheers. Cheers. Love. <laughs> I like that little like soft love. Can you nice? guys hear this? Wait. Cheers. I don't know. We that were just, was like a little too that much. That was a little weird, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Never <laughs> mind. Don't, don't tell us if you can hear it. So we're going to just launch right into our stories. I feel like do we – I don't think we need to dance today. I feel like we danced. I don't know. Do we need to dance again? Okay. I feel like we should. <laughs> Love. <laughs> Heart. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> we're out of control tonight. it's nine Good o'clock night. Um, so our first story is go ahead the golden bachelorette is happening it's coming it's to coming a back. city near you if you wow. live in california i'm sure mm-hmm. um but they're accepting applications i've been seeing all the ads. they are it's happening they are so if you are or you know a lovely older male who would be a wonderful contestant for the bachelorette, the golden bachelorette. Mm -hmm. This is your time to encourage him. Mm -hmm. Shoot his shot. Shoot his shot. And there's a lot of debate about who the first ever golden bachelorette is going to be. And I want to hear from you. I'm going to pull up a list of who people potentially think it is. Okay. um, Because I just think this is really interesting. Um, And... But do you know who you want it to be before I even look at this list? Okay, I do want it to be, if anyone was watching The Golden Bachelor, which I assume all of you were, um, I wanted least you to heard be about it. Susan, who I was... Uh, do you want it to be wasn't Susan? Wasn't she, uh, she was like Mrs. Kardashian. Yeah. Um, and so I want for her to be The Golden Bachelorette because she was so fun yep. and she was so kind. People think it's going to be Susan. Look at that. I and think that's the most common guess. Yeah, because she was so fun and so kind She's and just so like fun. a fun lady. So I think it would be great to watch her and yep. I'd be super into that. If I had like a random, just a random pick, like 
what's the word? Um, not a wildfire. What is it called when it's like a, a random thing? Ah, dang. I don't know. I should read the dictionary. I don't know. Um, if I just had a random choice, I think I would have it be like Jennifer Aniston. Oh. That would be like pretty crazy. Is she crazier. that old? She's not in her 60s. I feel like she's like 57. Yeah, but that's not, she's not golden. She's not golden. Jennifer Aniston. How old are you? Let's see. 55. 55. That's okay. not old. She's too young. I feel like she's most too people, young. Like, I mean, Gary was like 70, right? That's true. You know? That's true. And and granted, please, for everyone listening, I did not think Jennifer Aniston no. was like but 70. Also, I just how thought she's been single for a long show. time. No one deserves love like Jennifer Aniston deserves love. Yeah, she's love. really been and through it. So it was that. more just mm-hmm. like out of charity. I think that's it would so be true. Great. Look at the lineup of people she's been with. She deserves it. She deserves just some that's stability. So true. And where else can you get that from? Like a reality based, but on the show? Golden Bachelorette, why not? Okay, other people think it could be Kathy. Okay, who was my least favorite person on she that season. Did have quite an um, attitude. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then remember she like was the one of the MCs with charity for the yeah, which was golden weird. wedding. And weird. I just don't, I don't like her energy. I don't think yeah. she's very kind. Me either. I'm not into that. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a brutal to watch. Mm-hmm. I do, honestly don't know if I'd watch. Agreed. I don't know if I could get behind it. I would not. Um, and then other people think like either Leslie or Faith, which is okay. fair because they made it really far, Yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, and both like stunning, both like very down to earth. True. And so I think it'll be either one of them or Susan. Okay. Or Ellen, I, which I would okay. love. I would watch if it was an Ellen. Because for those of you who don't watch, Ellen is like the epitome of sweet grandma. Mm-hmm. Like just so sweet, so happy for everybody. Just really excited to be here. Um, and she just, it would be very cute. It would be very wholesome. Like it, it would, would stay in like the, you know. It would be. Stay so in the cute realm. who do you guys think it is? I don't know. Who do you Do think? you have any nominations yourself? I know you're going to nominate Is your great people? aunt, does your great aunt really need to find love? I know That's mine does. so true. She's 98. Do you have a great uncle She's who you think it. should go? That's true. Shoot a shot? Because they could be Send on them. the Golden Bachelor mm-hmm. or the Golden Bachelorette. Yep. So just pray on it mm-hmm. and think on it. Shoot their shot. Shoot their shot. They deserve it. Yeah. Well, we hope whoever it is finds love. And we'll be watching it. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not Kathy, then I will probably not watch it. I will probably not. So. No offense, Kath. But major offense. We won't be watching it. You were tough. So for our next story. In depressing news. But Jason, also so beautiful but for also their family. But also so beautiful. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. So Jason Kelsey has officially announced his retirement. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, wait. If you're listening and you're like, why do I care? Because why is this if you're turning Chanel, into a sports podcast? Yeah, you're kind of like, why? This is not a sport. Okay. Circle in. We're circling. Because mm-hmm. he talked about how important his wife was yeah. to him. Right? Yeah. His and we're here for healthy was like, relationships. Yeah. It was like his wife. He yeah. talked about Travis and like how important his little brother is to him. Yeah. And very like the display of men who were comfortable showing Ooh, their emotions. That part. Men who were crying. Get into that. It was so beautiful. Get and we that. love to see it. And people are like, I need Donna Kelsey to write a book mm-hmm. about how she raised two men who are like seem mingly very strong men and are also so emotionally vulnerable and mm-hmm. willing to be and like so proud of each other for being vulnerable and like he's up there doing his press conference crying travis is in the crowd crying like just the emotional vulnerability so beautiful and of course there are people in the comments on that are all the social medias who are like, haters. oh my gosh, you didn't need to cry about it. Like it was just his job and he stopped doing it. Like you don't need to cry. Mm. And like his brother, cry- like it's all very. So if you are that insecure in your masculinity or in your femininity that you are commenting on this, just move along. Just move along. We love people who are emotionally mature. Because they hear it antidepressant. to discuss. We foster ourselves a healthy yep. friendship mm-hmm. and we encourage health. We love the it. relationships as well as emotional, emotional honesty, honesty oh. and transparency. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. I want to read thing. a little part Tell us from what he what says he about his wife. It is just okay. Mm-hmm. Kelsey recalled, according to Glamour magazine, <laughs> Kelsey recalled choking up at the memory. I still remember the moment she walked through the door. 
The first instance is burned in my retina. It was like she glided through the opening, an aura around her. Then she started talking and I thought, man, is this what love feels like? She was beautiful and smart, serious yet playful. I knew Mm. right away. Through tears, he said that, you guys. In his retirement speech, and then talk, went on to talk about like how through his career, she has been there for every major milestone mm-hmm. and how he like wouldn't be where he is without her like holding him accountable and supporting him, which I love that, that it's like, it wasn't just like a, oh, and I want to thank my lovely wife for standing by my side throughout all these years. And then back to like my accomplishments as a football player, like he owed a lot, which like if you have a supportive spouse, you know that you owe a lot that you accomplish like mm-hmm. their support, but also them like calling you out on your stuff. And he mm-hmm. literally says that he's like, she like kicked me in the butt when I needed it, you know, it was like wow. calling him out and calling him to greatness, which is such a gift. And that's it in a partner. It's and it was just gift. like, so sweet. You guys like imagine you have been through it. You have been through it because mm-hmm. as I'm learning more about sports, um, <laughs> and football, the athletics, athletics, um, You know, I'm learning that, I mean, football is so unstable, Mm -hmm. right? Because you're like placed on a team and then you try, you try out and then you could get like kicked off Mm -hmm. and then you can get moved at any time. So people are like buying houses and then like have to move to another state all of a sudden, or you're just like in holding and it's just really stressful. And so imagine like being married to someone that's doing all that, which is stressful, but then also like having kids trying to manage a home. And also be a present spouse and like, and also try to be your own person. That's like a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. So to, so to really acknowledge her and be like, Hey, you're Mm -hmm. like, you are my like force that's Mm -hmm. helping me to do this. I mean, that's the kind of energy that we look for here at Antidepressant. That's what we need. That's what we need because like, it's, it's an emotional, well thumbs up. You know, it's a mental wellness Mm -hmm. thumbs up Mm -hmm. because like, that's the way to do it. You got to acknowledge the people that lift you up. And Mm -hmm. she is lifting a lot of people up, Yeah, him and their whole family. Yeah. So, and like doing so much for the kids when he's Mm -hmm. on away games and doing all of that. And I think it was really interesting as I was reading more about his retirement journey and how Kylie has like said in the past, like, I want you to retire when your body is can still function enough to like play with our kids and mm. enjoy their childhood. And so, I mean, realistically, he could have played for longer, you know, and he could have kept going. But knowing when to hang it up for your family and knowing when it's like worth it, because we've seen NFL players who <laughs> quit and are like, oh, I'm prioritizing my family. We and then talked swoop, about it. We they talked swoop about right it. back in. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to call you on that, but you know who you are. Mm-hmm. Like, and just swoop right back in the minute there's like a good enough option. And like, who's to say that, you know, I don't think that Jason will ever come back and like go to a different team. Mm-hmm. I really don't foresee that. Yeah. Um, but it is like a cool, like I am prioritizing my family, which is such a gift. And we love to, to see it. We love we it. Love to Keep see prioritizing it. those families. Keep people. prioritizing your family. Your primary vocation, if you will. Whoa. Speaking Football of. is not your vocation. <laughs> Whoa. 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 <laughs> Football is his vocation and shopping is Lower mine. Case B. <laughs> so is eating ice cream. So speaking oh of prioritizing your family. Oh gosh. Let's move into our next story, which is from Love is Blind. It's if happening. anyone has been watching Love is Blind, you guys, it is pretty We should start an emotional sport group. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Like mm-hmm. Between – okay, let me – okay, if you've been watching Love is Blind, I'm glitching. If you've been watching Love is Blind, you know that Chelsea has been something. Chelsea needs help. Chelsea needs some assistance. But mm-hmm. – and period, period. Jimmy is also not awesome. Jimmy needs help too. He's also not been great, mm-hmm. okay? So you're you're pretty – you're like stuck in a conflict. If everything I'm saying right now, you're like, who are these people – you need to get on watching it because you need to get on it. It's like pretty nuts. It's, so, there should be psychological studies done on this season of Love is Blind. And if you're a therapist out there who wants to do it, let me know and we can start zooming. Like I want, yeah, I want this study. So for those of you who have never watched it, don't know what we're saying. 
get ready. Mm. In Love is Blind, there's pods. We've talked about this before, but Mm -hmm. refresh. Uh, You are going on like blind dates with people. You decide to get engaged to somebody sight unseen, Mm. as they say a trillion times in this show. Then after you're engaged, you see your fiance, you go on a vacation, you have like four weeks until you get married. That's the premise of the show. Pretty much. Jimmy was kind of falling in love, as they say on these kind of shows. Falling for her. Falling, just mm-hmm. tripping. Yeah. Absent. Stumbling. It wasn't Stumbling something I was doing intentionally. Her. Very just, bachelor. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm, very. Uh, for Chelsea and Jessica. Chelsea was falling for Jimmy mm. and Trevor. Whoa. So they were both in love triangles. If we could all be honest about how this should have gone, Jimmy should have picked Jessica. She should have picked Chelsea should have picked Trevor. And then we would have had two couples instead of one that regretted their life decisions. Yes. But we ended up with one that Mm. regretted their life decisions. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy picked Chelsea, who will not answer whether she would have said yes to Trevor if Trevor would have asked her to marry her first, which is a little yikes. Mm -hmm. Um, But she said yes to Jimmy. Now they're out of the pods. My initial thoughts on Chelsea, and I can't wait to hear what your vibe is as well. Uh, There's a lot of things she's done that I'm like, girl, what's happening? Hmm. But I don't think the conversation necessarily is like, is she clingy? Is she this? Because he calls her clingy at some point. I don't, I think he's misaddressing the clinginess for like, she is very, very self-conscious. Wow. And very insecure. Mm -hmm. Like does not have the self-confidence to be entering a serious relationship Mm -hmm. because I do think you need to have a level of security in who you are to be in a relationship where you have confidence in your partner that they actually care about you. And I just don't think she actually believes she's worthy of being cared about and being loved. And so she's constantly like, well, I don't know if you love me. And he's like, I literally just told you I loved you. And she's like, Mm -hmm. well, how am I supposed to know? And he's like, I asked you to marry me. Like, I don't know what you want. And she's like, well, I don't know. I don't even think you think I'm pretty. And he's like, well, I tell you all the time I think you're beautiful. And she's like, I think you would have rather been with Jessica because Jessica looks like a Kardashian and I look like that. Like it's constant. Yeah. She is pretty. She lays it on. She lays it on thick. thick. And And in the most. Every conversation. That's true. And in the most recent episode, Mm -hmm. she, Jimmy had come back from hanging out with friends. Yeah. And Chelsea was just like, I don't think you want to spend any time with me. Yeah, I don't think you really think like you being around me. me. That's why you want to be out. That's why you want to be out all the time with your friends. And he was like, "I have been gone for an hour," mm-hmm. and she was like, "Well, I just don't really think you want to be around me. Like, I don't think." And he was like, "Yeah, I literally have not been gone for that long, and I just went to go see my friends. And you're honestly being kind of clingy. Mm-hmm. Ouch." He's also in that circumstance. That is a little so intense. You, yeah. So what are your what are your thoughts? Because like that conversation has been all over social media. Yeah. Like people, people have been, been like, oh my mm-hmm. gosh, like Chelsea, give it a break. People have been roasting and, Chelsea from the beginning though. That's true. Yeah. And the most of the time people have been like, oh, we're not really major fans of Jimmy. Yeah. But like also Kelsey's or Chelsea's not great. Yeah. But now people are like, well, Chelsea's not great. But also like, are we starting to like Jimmy now? Because I know. Like, what are we doing? Because he's like. Jimmy's kind of saying to people or saying to Chelsea, like, hey, you got to take a deep breath. Like, I yeah. can't do this every – because I think during yes. that conversation, if I'm recalling correctly, he was like, I don't – can't, like, do this right now. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't really want to do this. And then she, like, followed him. And then she, she was, fall- like, just trying to brush his teeth. She, like, followed him to continue the conversation. So what are your thoughts? I think that – as a mental Something health counselor, yeah. Jasmine, Jasmine has – whenever I'm like, what do you think about like, this, like, think? emotional thing? And she's like – you're like, but I, not just as you. Put on the hat. <laughs> Put, on the Put hat. it on. Tell me what you think as a professional because chances I, are I'm completely not on the same page and I need to be. So I yes. think you are. I think you are. You have similar hesitations as I do. Okay. I think the important thing is we are not seeing the full picture. Okay. Obviously. Mm-hmm. So he could have gone out every night, but he's saying, I only went out this one time and we don't know. Okay. Right? Fair, fair. But that means all we can judge us on is what we do now. So mm-hmm. I am only talking Like, I know now Jessica has come out and been like, oh, no, I'm actually on whatever, Chelsea's side, because Jimmy was going out all the time, whatever. But 
all of that aside, what we are seeing on screen, I think the interesting thing is like Chelsea comes at him so hard and will say things like, well, if this is the kind of guy you are and you're going out all the time and you're just going to leave me at home, even though he asked, apparently was like, uh, I'm cool? going to go. Are you yeah. cool? And like, she was like, you didn't ask me to go. And he's like, you were in bed in your pajamas. Mm. Like, I didn't think I had to, you know? And so it's like, there's a lot of nuance. Obviously we're not communicating well. So I think there needs to be like a communication of what we desire. Uh, and she needs to advocate for herself. And he also needs to check in with her. Like, Fair. I think there's mutual breakdown of communication. Um, but then for her to like come in so hot and be like, I don't think I can marry someone like that. Which is like a huge Whoa. deal in the show when you're like two and yeah. a half weeks away from your wedding or a week yeah. away from your wedding. Mm. And she knows what she's doing. And then it gets him to be like, okay, well, I don't know. That was like a really intense thing to say. But then she backpedals so hard. It's like, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. I love you so much. You know I love you. I mm. love this about you. I uh. love that about you. And like she like love bombs him and kind of tries to make him forget that they even had like that big tiff. But then like the next conversation, she's having another big like explosive meltdown mm. and then it's like love bombing him again and so i just think there's like a cycle happening here mm. that whether he is the best dude in the world and they are the in a healthy relationship which doesn't seem like her behavior is still unhealthy like regardless of what he's doing yeah. and same for like regardless of what she's doing he probably shouldn't be going out if his partner doesn't want him to unless mm -hmm. but there's like a communication to that because like you should be allowed to leave your home, you know? <laughs> you now, should be allowed to spend, yeah, go outside. And you should. I, I want, before you keep, like, I'm loving this, and I want you to just circle back real quick because here yeah. at Antidepressing, we are all about having health, health, mental we health, love right? love health, Mental wealth. Our, mental health is our mental, mental wealth, wealth, right? And is. so, like, we're here for positivity. Mm -hmm. And there has to be great ways to communicate. And earlier yeah. you said, like, when she was talking to him, you said – she knew what she was doing. Like she knew what she was doing when yeah. she said, I don't want to get married to someone like that. What did, yeah. you, what did you mean by that? Okay. I mean like she knew that she was threatening to leave him. Oops. But she wasn't saying like, I'm going to leave. But she was like, I don't want to be with somebody and mm. I don't want to marry someone with like that. So if that's who you are, Fake. then I'm out. Like mm. if you're the type of guy that goes out all the time, I'm out. And he was like, I went out one time. It what like, what are you saying? You know, like what's happening. Yeah. And so I think that's the thing. Like when you know you saying something is going to get to somebody, uh, then like that's not the vibe. And as you become more serious in a relationship with someone, you're going to know all their triggers. You're going to know their childhood trauma. And so pulling out the like, oh, when you said that, like you're acting like your dad Ooh. or you're acting like, like you can do stuff like that once you know <laughs> someone well you enough. Know. Yeah. That's and it. it's like, you know what you're doing. Mm. You know what saying that means to somebody and so you shouldn't do it, like pulling out those like one liners that are really going to get to somebody in an argument. Yeah. It's like just manipulative and yeah. problematic. You and know? you could tell when Chelsea said that, like as I was watching that clip, like you could see Jimmy's face kind of get perplexed. Yeah. Like he was like, well, what? And then he was Very like, OK, back. so you're saying you don't want to get married. Like, oh. Okay. Like, okay. It, it, then, like, we're not getting married. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that kind of communication is mm -hmm. A, not effective. But then, B, kind of puts you in a position where there's no conversation to be had. Yeah. Like, you're kind of just saying what you, you're saying. Mm -hmm. And you're not leaving room for me to be like, I apologize for being out. But, like, yeah. where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. So, like, w how could this situation you're have so been right. handled so right. better? Like, what would you say? in terms of like healthy, I know you said like she needs to advocate for herself and be like, I wanted to go and hang out. Like, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. But like, how could that conversation, she's obviously upset with Jimmy. Like, how could that have gone differently? Yeah. Well, I think first, like one of the people he went out with is one of his very close girlfriends Ooh. who he has had previous relations with. Caveat. So like, I get it. Mm. I get the like, I don't want you hanging out with her. I don't want you going out with her at night when I'm not around. Like I understand those reasonings, but then like that's a boundary that needs to be communicated before you go and meet his friends and are like, everything's chill. They're so fun. They're so, and act like everything's fine. And so I think like clearly communicating the boundaries of like, this is kind of who we're comfortable 
with each other being around on both sides because she's admitted I have close guy friends. One of her best friends is her ex-boyfriend. So that's an interesting double standard to me where I'm like, okay, so he is he okay with that? But you're not okay with it. And why? What's the reasoning? What's the... So I think like communicating that of like, what are we comfortable with in regards to like each other going out and with whom? Like, Mm. what does that look like? And then communicating if you want to be involved and like Jimmy being like, hey, I am going out with these people tonight. These are the people that I am going to be out with. Would you like to come? Are you more comfortable staying at home? Because assuming that your significant other doesn't want to come just because they're comfy in bed is yeah. not fair, you know? Yeah. Um, and so asking, like, do you want to be part of that? And maybe asking earlier in the day before they're already in bed. Yeah. You know, so like then plans you can are normally little, made. Give me a little chance. Yeah. yeah. Plans are made in advance. And to be fair, it's not like we've been married for a year and you're going out. It's like we have a week or so before our wedding. We just met each other. We're trying to spend all this time together. But you do need to like practice real life stuff in that time for them mm-hmm. to make a decision. Uh, but I think the communication needs to happen kind of on the front end of what does this look like. And then obviously your significant other is going to do things that disappoint and frustrate you. The first like issue is when he came home or whenever they were having that conversation, she was drunk and she admitted that she oh, was yeah. drunk. Mm-hmm. And so they're having this serious conversation, but she is intoxicated. Just so wait. can't even like just wait, think clearly enough to have a calm conversation. Mm-hmm. And so I think you, if you are going to address something serious with your person, you need to be in like a calm and clear state of mind and know what your objective is, what kind of things are off limits to say in the conversation so that you're not saying things that are harmful. That but you're going to regret. Yeah. But if you're drinking, it's really hard to then be like, I'm going to calmly have this conversation and not say anything that I'll regret. You know, like that's more difficult. So mm. set yourself up for success. If you're going to have a deep conversation with somebody about how their actions hurt you or offended you. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's a word. Yeah. Jimmy and Chelsea, we know that you're obviously listening to this we podcast. Know. And, and we know you need help. And we know that you need some help. And here at Antidepressing, we're here to help mm-hmm. you. Um, just like in our unauthorized theme song, we're just two like girls bringing blessings to you. Bringing blessings and to you. And the blessing is, is that the key to communication is just being honest, mm-hmm. taking mm-hmm. a breather, right? When it's not a great time to talk, just like don't do it. And advocate mm, for yourself. Wait. People can't read your minds. I feel like that's they a tale as old read as time. Your mind. Mm-hmm. Like people from the beginning of time have been like, blank can't read your mind. Can't Men can't read, read your mind. mind. Women can't read your mind. Nobody can read your mind. Mm-mm. So you got to say what you're feeling. You have to communicate. Right. And you got to love so yourself. True. You got to love yourself. You have to know your worth. Yeah. Like that is my message to Chelsea. That's it. And any woman out there mm-hmm. who feels like that's a constant. Gotta love issue yourself. in your relationship where you're like oh I just feel like they look at that girl they like her more they look at what it, like we have to love ourselves and know our worth mm. and it's so essential to feeling like you're deserving of love mm. and you are and you're made good and so love yourself so that someone else can love you and that you'll actually believe that they love you Wow, because you are made good by a good and gracious God and you there are loved the and good that, news today is the, good man. the good news today is you're good. And You're good. Uh, yeah. And Jimmy and Chelsea, we just want you to be better. Mm-hmm. Chelsea, we want you to feel today. like you just, are Megan Fox. Just channel feel confident. Jason and Kylie Kelsey. You know, channel Is Jason and Kylie Kelsey. It's probably not, mm. you know. Did Jimmy, do you feel like when she walked into the room, you remember it and it was burned into your retinas? That's how you, if you should don't, feel. Then it's not it. That's the gold standard. That's it. So, yeah. That is the gold standard. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. You guys – Really, really quick. Yeah. Uh, the Bachelor is still happening. We still love Joey so far. Still nothing has like crushed us. Still nothing has crushed us. I mean, he's mm-hmm. pretty like, he's been pretty consistently the most, one of the most beautiful men I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, emotionally, still weak. emotionally well. Yeah. Um, Good communicator. Available. Available. Um, Present. When he was speaking with Maria, when Maria kind of popped off on him last week, when uh-huh. she, well, when she was just like saying how she was feeling, but yes. not in a which place of like mm-hmm. uh, discernment, which she admitted yeah. herself. She was like, I shouldn't have said it like that. Yeah, and I, I should honestly have also yeah. should have just like collected myself before I talked yes. or spoke. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and she agreed. 
But when she was sharing all his things or her things, and he was just like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, I, I'm not going to like go after you and convince you to be with me. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you Mm -hmm. want. There was a little twinge of backlash from people. People were like, is Joey not going to fight for Maria? Mm -hmm. And I would love to know your thought because she said, Hey, I'm not going to kiss you because you've been kissing other girls. Okay. Catholic caveat. Do I think? We know. Yeah. We know. Yeah, right? right? We all know. It's okay? problematic. It's problematic. Okay. Let's let's start there. Let's leave that on the table. It's problematic, period. Period. On the show. On the show. Yeah. Okay. So she's like, I'm not going to kiss you if you've been kissing other girls. Mm-hmm. And I feel like. Well, and then she threatened to leave. Yeah. And she's like, and I'm, I'm going to leave. leave. Like, I can't do this. And he was mm-hmm. like. Which everybody hits a point. Yeah. And he was There's like. There's always okay. someone that hits that point. Yeah. And she's like, it's too much for me. And he's mm-hmm. like, all right. So are you going to like leave? Mm-hmm. And she's like, I just need a moment. And then she gets up and she walks away. Mm-hmm. And he's just sitting there and he's mm-hmm. like, well, I mean, if you decide to go, then what am I supposed then to do? Then you're going. To me, I don't think necessarily that's like a lack of fighting. Because also at that point, there are still five people there. You know, like she is one of five people that he has strong connections with, which obviously y'all know the premise of the show. You know, this is the thing that bothers me most about this show. I know. You came on this show mm-hmm. knowing that you were going to have to fight for the affection of one person and that that one person's job is not necessarily to fight for your affection. Like that's not the thing, you know, like they are there to decide which of these like 25 people they want to be with. Is their person. Yes. And the premise is always they are being pursued, Mm -hmm. not necessarily that they are pursuing. Like that's kind of the premise of the show. And so the whole like him not going after her thing, I think he's trying, his whole thing the whole time was like, I don't want to end up with someone who's like not going to actually pursue me at the end and like be into me at the end because of with charity, like he proposed to her and she, and she yeah. said no. Mm-hmm. And so he doesn't want that to happen. And I think for him, it came down to, which is why Maria went home this week. Like it came down to a lack of confidence that at the end she would actually want to be with him. Um, and to me, like, yeah, he's not going to chase after that because he doesn't have the time. Like this isn't a show or this isn't like a situation where you can be like, oh, I'm going to leave. And then someone chases after you and it's like a very dramatic. And I also think that's like weird and overrated and kind of ick anyways. Like that's not how, you know, an ideal it's relationship like is. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, as it's like, a girl. Mm, fight for me. Fight it's like as a like, girl, Ugh. like a, a little part of me, and I'm speaking as Chanel, right? Not for all female yeah, yeah. environment. So as Chanel, a little part of me is a little toxica. Right. And I'm like, I want to say something. Yeah. Right. I want to say something and I want you to be like, no, it's only been you. And me be like, you didn't believe that. And then like walk outside and Mm -hmm. then you, you, you like grab me by my arms. We're kissing in the rain. Twirl me around. We're kissing in the rain. And you're like, it's always been you forever. And that is what it felt like Maria was wanting. Like she kept putting him in situations where he would do where he would have to say it or she'd be like, whatever. Like even when they were like, she was trying to teach him French and she talked taught him to say like I, I love, love you. you and he like didn't know what he was saying like that kind of like weird like why are you putting him in these situations like I just felt like that was like she just kept doing that you know mm. and it was like a reoccurring thing on the flip last week's episode his date with Daisy his one-on-one date I loved what happened because I feel like this has, I think obviously this has never happened before <laughs> in, in Bachelor Nation Bachelor history. history. Yes, yeah. never happened before. But truly, in a similar way to Maria being like, I also am a human person who needs to be pursued, but in a much less dramatic way, um, which I think knowing what we know about Joey, he responds better to that. Like just mm-hmm. having a conversation versus like getting heated emotionally. Daisy was like, hey, I am not going to say, because they like went through their whole date, got to their dinner at the end of the day. And you could tell he was like, uh, because he said in the interview, he's like, all the other four girls have said they're like falling in love with me. Daisy hasn't said anything. And so I'm kind of like waiting, you know, so he was like, oh, you seem like you have something to say. And she was like, I just essentially she was like, I just want you to know, like, I'm not going to say I'm falling in love with you just to get a rose. 
Like if I'm not feeling it, I'm not going to say it. So she's like, I see a lot of potential with you. I really like a lot of things about you. I could see us having a future. I would love for you to meet my family so I can decide if there's a future with us. But like until that happens, like I'm not going to tell you I love you. I have strong feelings for you. I like you a lot. I like spending time with you. And that's, and that's like all mature. I can give you. That's you know? on mature. And I just loved And I love that he responded well to that and like gave her a rose and was like, thank you so much for your honesty. Like, I think that was so beautiful because so many of bachelors of past would have been like, oh, I can't believe you don't love me. Mm. Like, they don't know you, dude. They yeah. don't know you. They don't like, know they're you. allowed to say they don't love you. And you I know? think that was great when she said, like, I'd love for you to meet my family and then I'll be able to decide yeah, if there's actually a future with us mm-hmm. because like, that's legit. That's so If you legit. meet my mom and my mom's not into you, well then I'm sorry. Game over. Game over. That's all like, she wrote, babe. <laughs> like, that's it. Cut the tape. Like, that's it. Like, it's not going to work. You that meet, is you it. know, you meet my goddaughter. She's like, you, you're not fun to play with. Good night. You're done. Sorry. You're not good with kids. You know, someone you're meets, out. Yeah. Good night. You're out. Someone meets you and Steven and you guys are like, I just feel kind of weird. Sorry. That's it. You know, so it's like, I thought it was so fair of her to be like, you need to meet my people first. Like, let me, you're going to come into my environment Mm -hmm. first before I'm like spilling all this to you. Which is why the way Joey handled that conversation and the maturity, I don't think it's a lack of pursuit thing because Mm. that was him, her honestly being like, I'm not going to tell you you're the best thing that's ever happened because I don't know you like that. And I need to see. And he wasn't like, but her, he wasn't offended. He wasn't like, you're not getting a rose because you're not already in love. It wasn't that, you know? Yeah. And so I think what happened with Maria wasn't that it was like a lack of pursuit. It was that she has this whole time been like, I'm falling for you. I'm falling for you. It's only you. Despite all the drama she has gone through, which was not like inflicted on her essentially. But she has been like, I still want to be here. I still feel this connection. And then to take that and be like, I just don't know. I can't handle this. I can't handle the environment when she fought so hard to stay in that environment and then be like, I just don't know if I can handle it. I don't know. I don't know about you. I don't know about, and just kind of spiraled out of nowhere when she's given no indicators of that. Mm. And so I think it was like the big kind of dramatic moment of it all that he was like, like, I "I can't can't." keep up with, you know, like at a certain point, it was becoming kind of a lot for him, you know? You guys, it's I don't know about here. you, but if at this point you have still not been watching this season <laughs> of The Bachelor, it's seriously much better, you guys. Like, much it's better. way better than other seasons. And Joey, watch us say that, and then the last couple episodes be like crazy. <laughs> Whoopsie, we don't endorse <laughs> formally. So, oh my gosh, you know, just sure. uh, watch thus far because that's how much it's we've watched is thus mm-hmm. far, and it's fascinating. And Joey seems like a good guy, and like it's just so yeah. interesting. So. Very interesting. Can't wait to talk to you guys more about it. Mm-hmm. We love being here with y'all. It truly gives us life. Um, the world night is and day, depressing. day and night, all we do is think about this show all every minute of the day. So can't every wait hour. to talk to you guys next <laughs> week because the world is depressing. But we are not. Bye. Bye. Love y'all. Bye.